హలో చెప్పండి చెప్పండి ఈ పక్క ఓపెన్ చేసాను చాట్ బాక్స్ మ్యూట్ చేసి పడేసినాను చాట్స్ అన్ని కనిపిస్తాను ఈ పక్క క్లాసెస్ చెప్తాను అవునా సరే స్టార్ట్ చేసేనా మరి గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ ఎవ్రీబడి ఐమ్ ఖుష్బు ఐమ్ డీలింగ్ విత్ ఫార్మకాలజీ సబ్జెక్ట్ దీస్ డేస్ అండ్ టుడే మై టాపిక్ ఈస్ ఆస్మా వాట్ ఈస్ ఆస్మా ఆస్మా ఇన్ గ్రీక్ వర్డ్ విచ్ మీన్స్ డిఫికల్టీ ఇన్ బ్రీదింగ్ వాట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ ఇన్ ఆస్మా ఇట్ కాజెస్ స్మూత్ మజల్ స్పాసమ్ సెక్రేషన్ ఆఫ్ న్యూకస్ వ్యాసోడైరేషన్ దీస్ త్రీ ఆర్ ద మేజర్ రియాక్షన్స్ దట్ అకస్ difficulty in breathing these are the three components in that occurs in acute phase where in case of chronic phase it causes fibrosis edema and necrosis fibrosis edema and necrosis in children because of not using of steroids this acute phases immediately end up in chronic phase once it enters into chronic phase uh, you other use usage of steroids or methyl xanthine or other drugs cannot be beneficial at that stage in order to prevent this in acute phase itself we use one bronchodilator either it might be beta 2 agonist or xanthine plus corticosteroids so that it does not end up in chronic phase one more one more important point is in children in order to obtain at great dose of this steroids in lung we use meter dose inhaler with spacer once we use meter dose plus in spacer in children uh, this steroid will not be deposited in the oropharynx region that further lead into candidiasis in children we can prevent all these things and the children uh, children get get required amount of steroids in lungs okay now what are the symptoms in asthma we get breathlessness breathlessness is she, she or he or the patient or the child cannot walk few steps okay this dyspnea breathlessness cough chest tightness wheeze uh, ronchi and also uh, and also you can see sneezes uh, cold all these are symptoms of asthma okay there is no particular diagnostic test uh, to say that it is asthma but in most of the people we see this peak expiratory flow rate uh, force expiratory volume at first second and maximum mid expiratory flow rate all these components which are measured uh, which are measured are decreased in patients okay you be usually diagnosis by just symptoms <coughs> now the drugs what are the drugs that are used in asthma these are the various drugs that can be used in asthma they can be categorized as bronchodilators corticosteroids mast cell stabilizers leukotriene modulators monoclonal anti ige antibodies and miscellaneous drugs now the first one is bronchodilators in bronchodilators we can further classify them into selective beta 2 agonistic drugs they are further short acting and long acting available and non selective sympathetomimetics anti muscarinic drugs and methylxanthine all these four drugs comes under bronchodilators remember bronchodilators are nothing but selective beta 2 agonist 
non selective sympathetomimetics anti muscarinic drugs and methylxanthine now why this uh, sympathetomimetics and uh, parasympathetomimetics I'll, I'll explain in detail this bronchial muscle this bronchial muscle tone is normally maintained by parasympathetic sympathetic and adenosine and some neuropeptides this neuropeptides and adenosine will be deal later first parasympathetic and sympathetic parasympathetic receptors that is m3 receptors parasympathetic receptors are m1 m2 and m3 m1 m2 are located in different areas m3 is present in all smooth muscles not only bronchus in in stomach and everywhere in bladder everything you will have m3 receptors once these receptors are activated by acetylcholine that will increase cyclic gmp levels and once this cyclic gmp levels are increased that further result in bronchoconstriction and increase in mucus secretions in bronchus now i am saying the parasympathetic which is present in bronchial smooth muscle that will further that will lead bronchoconstriction and increase in mucus secretion whereas in git some other reaction that we will we'll deal later in parasympathetic okay in bronchus the parasympathetic receptors m3 receptors are present in smooth muscles always remember parasympathetic receptors are only present in bronchial smooth muscles now sympathetic this sympathetic innervation in airway muscles is very sparse you will not have receptors okay this beta 2 action all this are only present because they are these receptors are present in blood vessels and glands by these only they act okay all sympathetic effects that have been produced that is bronchodilation and decreased mucus secretions are produced by circulating catecholamines you will not have much beta 2 receptors in bronchial smooth muscle this is one more important pgp only sympathetic innervation is present in bronchial muscle Symp only parasympathetic innervation is present in bronchial muscle sympathetic innervation is very sparse okay now comes with beta 2 agonists now we are dealing with sympathetic system what does sympathetic system it does by activating of the sympathetic system in bronchial muscles it causes bronchodilation and decreased mucus secretion this is activated by the help of beta 2 receptors okay so the stimulation of beta 2 receptor causes bronchodilation um, it inhibit the release of mediators second effect and it stimulate mucociliary clearance which means that mucus production is decreased or the already formed uh, mucus is completely cleared from the airway cavity. Okay, it is mainly used for the treatment of acute exaggeration of asthma. There is one more important PGP that is, it is used for acute bronchial acute exaggerations of asthma. Okay, immediate relief if you want any patient immediate relief of uh, this bronchial construction, we can use beta two agonist. Okay. What are the beta 2 agonists available in the market? It is it is in the form of short acting or long acting. Now short acting. Short acting is solvitrol, levobitrol, peribitrol. These two has enhanced beta 2 selectivity. They are generally used in IV inhalation and onset of action is very quick, less than five minutes. Okay. Long term use of these, long term use of this in chronic asthma, it may diminish the control which perhaps this is called as beta receptor uh, regulation this beta receptor down regulation or tachyphylaxis I'll, I'll just tell you in uh, next slide okay because of long term use the effect is reduced so in order to avoid this we have to use along with steroids to obtain the required amount of effect this is one more drug that is terbutaline short acting beta agonist okay this this is only bronchodilator that is safe to use in pregnancy other drugs it is not much used this is one is used in pregnancy and this has one more effect that is cardio stimulatory effect now long acting long acting beta 2 adrenal uh, receptor agonist or long acting beta 2 agonist short acting beta 2 agonist are what are those drugs solvitamol I'll, I repeat once again, they are solvitamol, levetrobutrol, and peributrol. Now, long acting, long acting, solmetrol, formetrol, don't forget. These are also inhalant, inhalants. They are used by the process of inhalation itself. They have slow onset of action and longer duration. Why this long duration is because they have very lipophilic. That means they get attached to the uh, lipid cells and they, uh, they produce the effect slowly. 
they can be used for prophylaxis and they cannot be used for they cannot be used for acute attack this long acting beta 2 agonist these drugs when these drugs are used much relief is obtained in patients so they stop using steroids or they does not use or they use less dose of steroids further what happens because of using this long uh, acting beta 2 agonist for the longer duration it results in tachyphylaxis tachyphylaxis is nothing but um, if you used required amount of for suppose if you if you want some res response if you use 100 100 micrograms if you use 100 micrograms you will get one response if you use this 100 micrograms or one year second year third year the response will be reduced because this beta 2 receptors down regulation this is the genetic morphological changes that occurs in cell but the, the response is not produced in order to produce required amount of response you have to increase the dose but the, that that lead to toxicity okay so because of this down regulation um this uh, long acting beta 2 agonist does not uh, does not produce response and the patient may lead to fatal asthma or attack or hospitalization sometimes even death so from that day they started using this long acting beta 2 agonist along with corticosteroids to get better response either short acting beta 2 agonist or long acting beta 2 agonist they should be used with corticosteroids so that required amount of response can be produced okay so always remember this is one more important pgp this long acting beta 2 agonist is not used along is not used alone it is not used alone i repeat once again long acting beta 2 agonistic agents is not used alone they have to be used along with corticosteroids okay this is also used in copd that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease now non selective agents non selective sympathetic agents now as the name indicates it is non selective non selective means the sympathetic system what is the sympathetic system receptors present in our body it is alpha alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 so non selective agents means it acts in all receptors so these drugs are not at all used nowadays they are not in usage more only ephedrine drug that is in acute stage itself it is used they are not used because they have some other effects that is beta 1 beta 1 receptor is mainly present in heart it causes heart arrhythmia tachycardia exacerbation of angina all these are side effects so these drugs whatever non selective agents they are not at all used nowadays they are used very mildly only in emergency condition that is ephedrine okay uh, so the non selective agents are isoprelin ephedrine epinephrine these are relatively non selective beta receptor agonist i told you these act in all on all receptors their action will be seen okay because of their action on beta 1 receptor that is present on heart usage has been declined okay during acute attack very emergency attack when the other drugs are not functioning on the patient then you can use epid okay oral preparations if they are used in oral preparation they are given as qyd epinephrine these also act on beta 1 beta 2 alpha 1 receptors okay they can be administered as inhalant or subcutaneously onset of action is very occurs very fast that is within 5 to 10 minutes and the duration will be for 2 to 3 hours what are the adverse effects of this adrenergic agonist uh, the main as i told you because of this non selectivity activity that acts on alpha beta 1 beta 2 and other receptors these drugs are not used the this tachycardia arrhythmias exacerbation of angina occurs because of their action on beta 1 receptor that is present in heart okay and the most common adverse effect the most common adverse effects of this beta agonist is skeletal muscle tremor i repeat once again this is most frequently asked question the most common adverse effect of beta 2 agonist is skeletal muscle tremor the most common adverse effect of beta 2 agonist is skeletal muscle tremor the adverse effect one most adverse effect is present that is vasoconstriction and hypertension that occurs because of alpha agonist that occurs because of action on alpha 1 receptor okay vasoconstriction and hypertension occurs because of action on alpha 1 receptor the most common adverse effect is skeletal muscle tremor the most 
the most common effect is skeletal muscle tremor now tachyphylaxis i repeat once again i i tell you once again tachyphylaxis what is this tachyphylaxis 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 is nothing but in order to obtain required amount of response if you use 100 mg continuously you use same 100 mg for uh, one hour two hour three hours then the response is not obtained same it get decreased okay when this children this asthma is generally presented very small children that is 4 to 5 years or 6 years child we get so when they start using of uh, this receptors beta 2 agonist receptor beta 2 agonist drug solvitamol or puffs or solvitamol puff what happens once they start using that 100 micrograms for suppose 100 micrograms uh, the response uh, the response or the relief they get get decreased okay in order to prevent this we have to add methylxanthine or corticosteroid why this occurs why this occurs this mainly occurs because of down regulation gene down regulation the gene that in, is important for production of the receptor does not produce required amount of receptors at that site okay and that receptor get modified so that this drug cannot get attached to that attached to that receptor and produce the response hmm? that is nothing but tachyphylaxis in order to prevent this we have to add either xanthines that's methyl xanthines or corticosteroids so now methyl xanthines the methyl xanthine this is most common useful drug okay it is it is most commonly used in private sectors or public sectors also you will see terephthalene uh, theophylline aminophylline and doxophylline deprofilin all these drugs are xanthines methyl xanthines this methyl xanthines are plant products they are obtained from plants the main mechanism of action of this methyl xanthine is phosphodiesterase inhibitor phosphodiesterase inhibitor what is this phosphodiesterase inhibitor it is very important enzyme that is important for the metabolism of cyclic kmp okay why this cyclic kmp okay once atp get utilize the the product that is produced is cyclic kmp this cyclic kmp have to undergo further metabolism and have to produce atp that is used for the next contraction okay this metabolism of cyclic kmp is inhibited huh? in metabolism is inhibited by the by inhibiting phosphodiesterase enzyme okay further this cyclic kmp levels are increased and that leads to bronchodilation this phosphodiesterase 3 or 4 phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor is present in bronchial smooth muscles phosphodiesterase 4 is present in eosinophils and mast cells this is the main important mechanism of action of methylxanthine methylxanthine main mechanism of action is phosphodiesterase inhibitor either 3 or 4 3 is present in smooth muscles 4 is present in eosinophils and mast cells other actions methyl xanthine has one more action that is adenosine receptor agonist uh, before also i told you first itself i told you bronchial smooth muscle is maintained by sympathetic parasympathetic adenosine receptor and some neuropeptides right in this adenosine this adenosine is blocked by the methyl xanthine what does this adenosine causes adenosine causes bronchial uh, constriction and promotes the release of histamine from mast cells adenosine causes bronchial constriction and promotes the release of histamine from mast cells am i fast for you please reply me am i fast for you you want me to be slow are you there do you guys following me
I didn't get any response. I think you could understand me. Okay. Before itself, I told you the bronchial smooth muscle is maintained by sympathetic, parasympathetic, adenosine, and some neuropeptide. This adenosine blocker is methylxanthine. It is one of important MCQ. What does this adenosine causes? This adenosine causes bronchial constriction and promotes the release of histamine from mast cells. Methylxanthine also further decreases the entry and mobilization of cellular calcium stores in east of and base nodules. And this theophyll also have some anti-inflammatory properties that reduces the airway responses to antigens. Hmm? So it inhibits the release of histamine. It inhibits the entry of calcium into eosinophils and base nodules. Further, it inhibits adenosine causing bronchial constriction. I repeat the pharmacological effects of xanthin once again, bronchiodilatory. Bronchiodilatory effect is produced how? Bronchiodilatory effect is produced by inhibiting adenosine. By inhibiting adenosine. And the anti-inflammatory effect is produced by inhibiting histamine. And immunomodulatory effect is produced by decreasing the entry of calcium into the cells. So three responses are seen in xanthins. That is bronchiodilatory, anti-inflammatory, and immunomodulatory. Other effects, it has some positive chronotropic, inotropic action on heart, which means it increases heart rate and also BP. It has positive chronotropic and inotropic effects on heart. It also causes pulmonary and peripheral vasodilation and cerebral vasoconstriction. By causing cerebral vasoconstriction, it increases the alertness and cortical arousal at low doses. When it comes with high doses, it produces severe nervousness and seizures due to medullary stimulation. It also causes gastric stimulants, gastric acid and pepsinogen release that leads to ulcer and it causes diuresis. All these are the uh, mechanism of actions of methylxanthine. Now, this methylxanthine can be give, administered as inhalation or intravenous. It has very narrow therapeutic index. Blood levels should be monitored on initiation of therapy. This theophyllin has, uh, has been affected by diet, drugs, and hepatic disease. Therapeutic uses of this xanthine, therapeutic uses. Uh, they can be used in acute or chronic asthma. Uh, that is unresponsive to inhaled corticosteroid or beta agonist. They can be administered prophylactically. They can be used to treat chronic obstructive lung disease and emphysema. It is used to treat apnea in preterm infants, infants and it is also used to relieve dyspnea associated with pulmonary edema from CHF. Okay? It is mainly used in asthma, COPD, apnea and dyspnea associated with heart failure these four important points adverse effects adverse effect it causes arrhythmias nervousness vomiting gastrointestinal bleeding behavior problems in children these drugs are generally combined with beta 2 agonist is now suspend, suspected to be responsible for the recent uh, rise in asthmatic mortality. Why these damping are not used? Why they are not used is because of having narrow therapeutic window. Narrow therapeutic window. What does that mean? In order to produce a therapeutic effect, you require 10 microgram per ml. If slight increase of this drug lead to adverse effects, what happens in if adverse effects appears? If adverse effects appears, it causes arrhythmia, nervousness, gastrointestinal bleeding, vomiting, and also it stimulates uh, medullary. I already told you it causes nervousness and seizures also because of medullary stimulation. All these will be the adverse effects. So we have to use very carefully. And uh, there are a lot many drug interactions, as I told you, because of narrow therapeutic index and uh, drug interactions, these theophyllin are not used uh, frequently. Mm -hmm. uh, it dec uh, decreases, these, fall these drugs decreases the theophyllin uh, blood levels by 
by enzyme induction. Uh, I already all these are enzyme induction. That is smoking, phenytoin, carbamazepine, rifampamine, phenobarbital are enzyme inducers. Enzyme inhibitors are so that is cytochrome P450 enzyme inhibitors are erythromycin, cimetidine, ciprofloxin, OCP, allopyrinol. All these cause inhibit the metabolism and increases the theophylline dosage. Corticosteroids when using along with theophylline, it causes hypokalemia. This hypokalemia will have much effects on the heart, so we need to be carefully monitored. Now comes with next drugs that is anti-muscatinic or anti-cholinergic drug. The parasympathetic innervation present in bronchial smooth muscle is M3 receptor. By blocking this M3 receptor, it causes bronchiodilation and decreased mucus secretion. Okay. And it can be divided into short acting and long acting. This is one more important drug. I, I repeat once again, the short acting is ibratobium. I comes first. So first one is short one. Short acting is ibratobium. Long acting is teotropium. T comes last. Okay. When it comes with ABCD, T comes last. So long acting will be teotropium. Ipratropium is short acting. Long acting is teotropium. This is one of important MCQ that has been asked in recent years. So short acting will be protropium, oxytropium. Long acting, triotropium, acrylidium. They have competitive antagonistic to acetylcholine receptor at muscatinic receptor, M3 receptor, as I told you. They mainly inhibit acetylcholine mediated constriction of bronchial airways and they also decrease and they also decrease uh, vagus, vagal stimulated mucus secretion. You only like to. Light, light. Light in the light in the book. Light. I'm going to go down there. Please switch right there. Basement, but I don't so. Okay, now. Okay, now ipratrobium. Ipratrobium is quaternary amine that is poorly absorbed and does not cross the blood brain barrier. It is generally ad administered as aerosol and it, it lowers the systemic absorption, limits the adverse effects. Tiotropium. I repeat once again ipratrobium is short acting, tiotropium is long acting, long acting muscarinic antagonistic that is mainly approved for the maintenance of COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The next drug is corticosteroids. Corticosteroids are called as controllers or preventers. Why they are called? Because they provide long-term control by causing stabilization of symptoms due to their anti-inflammatory effect. They provide long-term control by causing stabilization of symptoms due to their anti-inflammatory effects. Um, they are further classified as oral parenteral inhalation, oral prednisone, uh, dexamethasone, betamethasone, parenteral hydrocortisone, methyl prednisoline, inhalation, budisonide, flusonide, momitazone, peclomethasone. All these drugs are approved for asthma. Now, mechanism of action of this corticosteroids. They mainly enhance beta-2 receptors by upregulating beta-2 receptors in lung cells and 
leukocytes. They also inhibit the release of prostaglandins and leukotrienes. These are very important for inflammation. By preventing this, it prevents the inflammatory uh, reactions like uh, smooth muscle contraction, vascular permeability, air, airway muscle, airway mucus secretion. The main mechanism of action of corticosteroids, they mainly enhance beta-2 receptors by upregulating beta-2 cells that are present in airway mucus. Further, they inhibit release of prost prostaglandins and leukotrienes and preventing the inflammatory reaction to occur um, that they prevent the smooth muscle contraction, vascular permeability and airway mucus secretion. They also produce eosinophilia by preventing the mediators release from Eosinophilias. They also inhibit formation and release of cytokines and chemical mediators. So, so main action is anti-inflammatory action. Use, use of inhaled corticosteroids is recommended for initial treatment of asthma so that acute phase of asthma is not entered into the chronic phase. Okay, That is the reason the children early use of uh, corticosteroids would be beneficial. Um, they can be used prophylactically. The most common adverse effects of this corticosteroids or glucocorticoids is hoarseness and oral candidiasis. In order to prevent this oral candidiasis in children, five to six years children, we have to use meter dose inhaler along with spacer so that most amount of the drug is reached to the lower part of lungs rather than deposit on the oropharynx. Uh, other most serious adverse effect is adrenal suppression and osteoporosis that can be noted when it is used for prolonged periods. Mm. Other group of drugs that is mast cell stabilizers. Mast cell stabilizers are nothing but non-bronchiodilating, non-steroidal. I repeat once again, they are non-bronchiodilating. It does not cause bronchial dilation and it is does not have any non-steroidal, which means it does not have any effect just like steroid effect, it does not have any steroidal effect. They mainly inhibit release of mediators from mast cell. Okay. Uh, and they further suppress the activation of eosinophils or neutrophils or monocytes. They also inhibit the cough reflex by inhibiting the chloride channels present in brain. Most important chronic, important bit that re recent or frequent, uh, frequently asked bit is it does not cause relaxation of bronchial smoothness. It is sodium chromate which is mast cell stabilizer and it can be administered by inhalation uh, available as microparticulate powder or aerosols it is used prophylactically in asthma it does not reverse an established bronchiospasm it's not a bronchiodilator it is only antihistaminic that inhibits both early and late phase response it has some common side effects like sore throat cough dry mouth and headache next group of drugs are um, leukotriene inhibitors that is jephirlocast montelukast jephirlocast montelukast are, are the uh, leukotriene receptor antagonistic they are receptor antagonistic i repeat once again jephirlocast montelukast all these leukast drugs jephir montelukast drugs are leukotriene receptor leukotriene receptor antagonistic they mainly block the actions of all leukotrienes, that is uh, CD, C4, D4, E4, all drugs. They mainly reduce the bronchioconstriction. I repeat once again, it reduces the bronchioconstriction and inflammatory cell infiltration. But when you, when mast cell stabilizer, they does not cause bronchiodilation. But leukotrienes causes bronchiodilation. Okay, and they are very effective in mild persistent asthma. They are recommended as alternative to meet medium dose inhaled corticosteroids and they are used in they are used in moderate and severe persistent asthma adverse effects of jeffrey lucast is headache and hepatotoxicity very important very important bit very very important bit it causes hepatotoxicity don't forget Jeffrey Lucas side effect is hepatotoxicity. So you have to be very 
careful in uh, liver failure patients. And Jeffrey Lucast and Monty Lucast are administered orally one to two times per day. This Monty Lucast is generally present along with levocytrogen. Now comes with gelutin. Gelutin inhibits 5 lipooxygenase enzyme. What is this enzyme? This enzyme is very important for the synthesis of leukotriene. Once this enzyme is inhibited, leukotriene is not produced. Before two drugs, that is Monty Lucast or Jeffrey Lucast, they are leukotriene receptor blockers. Now, this drug is inhibit the synthesis of leukotriene. Okay. And uh, it mainly reveals uh, bronchioconstriction from exercise. And it is administered orally, usually four times per day. And it also has adverse effects like liver toxicity. Uh, hepatic enzyme should be monitored. And it may cause flu like symptoms like chills, fatigue, and fever. And it decreases the metabolism of terfinadine, warfarin, theophyllin. So when using along with warfarin, we have to be very careful. Now the last drug, that's anti-immunoglobulin antibodies, Ig, anti-IgE antibody, that is omalizumab, omalizumab. It is recombinant humanized monoclonal antibody. It mainly binds to the human IgE and has very high affinity to the FC receptor. By by block, uh, it blocks the binding of IgE to mast cells and basophils and other cells associated with allergic response. It mainly lowers the free serum IgE concentration as much as 90%. Okay, since, since it does not block allergen antibody reaction, lead to reduction in aller allergen concentration. So, IgE is reduced. So the response is reduced. So the, in, the reaction that occurs, the allergic reaction will be reduced by this omalizumab. Now the last drug. The last drug is nitric oxide. I repeat once again, the bronchial smooth muscles are maintained by one, adrenergic, cholinergic. So adrenergic beta-2 agonist. Cholinergic, that is anti-muscinonic drug, striotropium, triotropium. And one more, one more thing, adenosine. Adenosine is inhibited by xanthine, and the other one is neuropeptides. The neuropeptides are nothing but nitric oxide, neurokinin A, and substance B. These three neuropeptides further involve in bronchodilation and bronchoconstriction. So neurokinin A and substance B are released from unmyelinated sensory C fibers when stimulated by the inflammatory mediators and some irritant chemicals like SO2 and cigarette smoking. Okay. This cigarette smoking causes uh, stimulation, causes stimulation by the uh, neurokinin A and substance B. The main action of this nitric oxide is it causes bronchodilation. It is used in asthma and also in management of pulmonary hypertension. So nitric oxide will be dealt later completely. Uh, now, bits. Some of you asked question. One second. Sanjeev Kumar has asked one question that is hepatoid toxicity is responsible for asthma related reactions. I didn't Sanjeev.
okay fine i didn't get you what you are saying sanjeev kumar i want you to ask you once again it's okay now we go for questions what is the current status of inhaled long acting beta 2 agonist in the management of asthma current status of inhaled long acting beta 2 agonist in the management of asthma indicated as monotherapy or indicated in combination with inhaled anticholinergic indicated in combination with an inhaled corticosteroid not indicated in asthma management i want answer please anybody tell me answer answer okay everybody are busy i think so uh, long acting beta 2 agonist it relieves patients for longer duration okay and the patient start using this long acting and stop using of steroids uh, sometimes because of this down regulation of this gene tachyphylaxis this drug does not produce enough amount of response so that may lead to hospitalization sometimes fatal attacks also may be occurring so these drugs cannot be used as monotherapy they have to use they have to be used along with corticosteroids if corticosteroids they are being used you will get nice response okay so option is c no c option is c they have to be used along with corticosteroids next question which of the following drugs are associated with a side effect of strong stress syndrome this line is present in sharma book sharma pharmacology i'll wait for you okay the answer is montelukast answer is a answer is a montelukast now comes with next question mepolizumab mepolizumab is approved for the use in severe asthma the drug is a monoclonal antibody against the drug is an a monoclonal antibody against ige IgA interleukin 5 interleukin 12 in IgE IgA interleukin 5 interleukin 12 
Yes. Answer is correct. It is interleukin 5. IgE is omalizumab. We know. IgA does not play any role in allergic conditions. Remember. So next is interleukin 5 and interleukin 12. Two options are left. Interleukin 5 involving allergic reaction. So this uh, mepolizumab is monoclonal antibody against interleukin 5. Next question. Which of the following is preferred therapy in persistent asthma? Which of the following is preferred therapy in persistent asthma? Inhaled short acting beta 2 agonist, inhaled long acting beta 2 agonist, inhaled long acting beta 2 agonist plus corticosteroid, inhaled short acting beta 2 agonist plus corticosteroid. So what will be the next answer? Yes, correct. It is long acting beta 2 agonist with corticosteroids. That will be helpful. And that could able to relieve this bronchioconstriction for longer duration in patients. Yes, that's it. By this, we end the topic asthma. Okay. Ah, I will in the past, my topic is Ah, I will in next topic. Ah. Oh, no, no, no. It's a good thing to choose to jump to now. Ah, sorry. Okay. Inga leave Jesse Chama. <laughs>